Healing the Inner Child. Today we're going to talk about who is our inner child, what happens to our inner child when we grow up, and uh, why our inner child is stopping us from achieving our goals in life, from creating healthy love and relationships, from being successful. And the most important question that we're going to discuss today is how to heal our inner child. Hi guys, my name is Lena Semenek and this is my YouTube channel, Psychology of Happiness. Welcome. I'm glad to see you. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the, the notification bell so you won't miss anything in the future. In this channel, I post educational videos about money, relationships, success, self-esteem, sexuality, overeating and all other important and topics that might help you to become happier and more successful in life. And of course, if you like this video, if you like this channel, please click like button. It will mean a lot to me and I will be happy to see your likes, your comments, your thoughts, your questions in the comment section below this video. So let's start today's topic. Who is the inner child? The inner child is a part of your mind. In some spiritual practice, it is also called a part of your soul. This part was developed during your childhood, in the past. Everyone has this part, no matter your gender, no matter your religion, belief system or age. The inner child is part of us that is responsible for joy in our life, uh, that is responsible for the ability to be spontaneous, to be creative, to have fun, to be easygoing and to enjoy life itself. If you think about kids, they have the unique ability not to worry about tomorrow. They know how to have fun, how to be present, how to dream big. They know how to enjoy life and people around them. Children love to dream big. They say, when I grow up, I will buy a house. When I grow up, I will become a doctor. When I grow up, I will travel to the moon. When I grow up, I will be the president. They believe in themselves. They are not afraid of what other people will say or think about them. They have incredible imaginations and believe that everything is possible. What happens with our inner child when we grow up? When therapists, life coaches, spiritual mentors talk about the inner child, usually they say that you need to heal your inner child or you need to connect to your inner child. If you are struggling with creating a healthy, loving relationships in your life, if you have self-doubts, if you have low self-esteem and self-confidence, if you criticize yourself a lot, if you cannot achieve your dreams, then in most cases, it means that your inner child has been hurt back in the childhood and still uh, you feel this pain that is stopping you from achieving what you want in life. Uh, basically, it means that you, when you were a child, you were affected by an event or several events. Usually it's not one event, it's multiple events. Uh, and it, you could not process those events. Uh, those events uh, had a big impact on your psyche, even if you remember very little or nothing at all. Uh, a child does not understand why a traumatic event happened to him, but a child can feel the pain. A child has emotions and feelings, but he does not know what to do with them. Lots of adults don't know how to process their emotions. Lots of adults don't know how to deal with stressful situation. So if you think about a little child who is going through traumatic event, often a child does not know what to do with those uh, things that he or she feels inside. So we suppress those feelings, we suppress uh, our pain for years. And when we grew up, we, we still have this pain. And this pain is uh, stopping us from achieving our goals. Some people say that their childhood was not that bad. They had good memories and can even say that they were happy. 
why might those people have problems with their relationships and careers? Uh, most people have good and bad memories from their childhood. It's not about how bad or terrible your childhood was. It is more about how you deal with the negative events that do occur in your childhood. Siblings can react differently to their parents' divorce. Siblings can react differently to their grandparents' death. They can react differently to criticism. Some kids are more sensitive than others. Some kids uh, uh, receive more love and support than others. When a child cannot deal with a traumatic event, when they don't receive enough emotional support from adults, from their parents, or when they were traumatized or even abused by their caregivers, they create some type of a shield, a defense mechanism. And usually uh, they create multiple defense mechanisms. And those mechanisms help them to suppress their feelings, their emotions, and ignore the pain. Uh, in order to do only one thing, these mecha mechanisms work only for one goal. And this goal is to survive, is to survive through this traumatic event. What is a defense mechanism and how does it work? Think about them as filters. Uh, filters that are changing your perception of people, of the situation, of the world itself, like a pair of sunglasses. Sunglasses might be brown, might be yellow, might be green, might be pink, any color you want. So when you wear your sunglasses, you can see everything and everyone and every situation differently from the person who is wearing different sunglasses. We all have some type of childhood trauma and we all have our unique sunglasses. That's why it is so hard to understand, to fully understand each other. Uh, an example, let's say there is a couple, the girl is wearing pink sunglasses and sees everything in pink. Her world is beautiful, uh, pinkish, happy and um, shiny. And her boyfriend is wearing black sunglasses and his world is organized, goal-oriented. Uh, he sees everything in categories. He is very critical person. So they have a very small chance of being happy in their relationship. It will be extremely hard for them to understand each other and to create a happy relationship. It will be extremely challenging for them to relate to each other. Uh, I can share another example of how those defense mechanisms or filters work. Uh, just think about your cell phone. When you take a picture of yourself, you apply several filters before you post it on Instagram or Facebook. And you don't pick just random filters. You are trying to create a specific image of yourself. So you want to have a specific image that you want to present to this world. And this image might not be true you. This image is just the presentation of what you want people to see in you. So when you are posting some pictures on Facebook, in reality, if you apply multiple filters, you're kind of hiding the true self behind this picture. You're just showing people uh, the nice image of yourself. But what really happens to you, you prefer not to show. We are afraid to be vulnerable. We are afraid to show our emotions because we are afraid of being judged. Even before applying filters, you can sort through 10, 20, 30 photos before you find the one that you like. And this image usually is a mask that we are putting on to hide our true self. Uh, the main reason for that is because we are afraid to feel pain again. We are afraid to be criticized. We are afraid that people about what people will say or think about us. 
and we are not willing to go and face the same pain that we once had in our childhood. How can people be aware of those filters and how can we recognize them? Not all filters are bad. Some of them are good and actually useful. Some filters can uh, help us to avoid unnecessary risks in life. Some people can help us to see the enemy and to protect our boundaries. So not all filters are bad. And each of us has hundreds of filters and it's not possible to recognize all of them. We don't actually need to recognize all of them. The most important thing is to be aware of those filters that are stopping us from being happy, successful, healthy, and create the life that we want. So you need to pay attention to the repetitive, negative events in your life. Uh, then you can get some idea that maybe in those specific situations you're using some specific filters or some specific behavior patterns, belief system that is not letting you to overcome the challenges in your life. For example, I had a client, a woman who was falling in love with unsuccessful guys all her life. She came to me when she was 54. Uh, all her boyfriends and two ex-husbands struggled financially. She was the one who was taking care of all the bills of most families expense, family expenses. She was paying for vacations, for kids' activities, uh, mortgages, cars, etc. So she came to me and she said that she started uh, of dating uh, financially unsuccessful guys. She started of being responsible for all the bills in her life. When I asked her about her childhood, she told me that when she was 11 years old, her father received an offer from a very well paid job in another state. He accepted uh, the offer and had to leave for two years in another state. Yes, he called his daughter regularly. He was always home for birthdays and holidays. But the girl missed her daddy so much that she created a filter or in other words, a belief system, which she called money destroys relationship. Money destroys love. So every time she met a successful man, she was turning away from him. She was attracted only to poor, financially unsuccessful guys, and it was all subconscious. It was not her goal. It, she did it without even realizing that she was doing it. Uh, a few times in her life, she was actually dating a well-established guys, but those relationships did not last long. She was losing interest in them quickly. So from this example, you can see how the inner child who was hurt back in a childhood can um, affect our current life, how the inner child can stop us from creating relationships or even find the partner that we want. And although oh, she, this woman from this example was 54, her inner child was still in pain. Her inner child still remembers the pain and was avoiding the pain by avoiding successful men in her life. So her emotional wound uh, is so deep that subconsciously she is, um, she is ignoring well-established and confident men. She is afraid to be left alone as she was when her father left her. So the pain that money will take her man away is still big. It's somewhere deep on her subconscious level that this pain dictates uh, her behavior. And uh, for years she's been struggling without understanding why. So to summarize, when you are looking at your life, when you are trying to identify repetitive events, um, 
try to think about your childhood and how your life can be related to your childhood it can be something in your relationships it can be something related to your career uh, let me actually give you uh, a few more examples and hopefully those examples help, can help you to be uh, more aware of your own life example number one a woman who falls in love with emotionally unavailable men uh, maybe this guy is dating another uh, woman or maybe he's married or maybe he's still emotionally attached to his ex uh, example number two, a person who can mm, start several projects but never finishes them. Example number three, a person who ends up with friends who are using them. Over and over, friends are lying to this person or betraying him or not keeping their words. Another example, a person who wants to move to another city, another state, another country, but never tries. Uh, and the last example that um, I would like to share with you is a person who wants to start a healthy lifestyle, a person who wants to eat healthy, go to gym, uh, a person who wants to lose weight, and then suddenly after two, three, four weeks, he gives up and gain even more weight and this is a very common example uh, especially for the united states and i have a separate webinar where i talk a little bit more in detail about how food helps us to suppress our emotions our pain and um, i recommend you to watch the webinar which is called tell me what you eat and i tell you what problems you have basically based on the type of food that you like to eat, we can identify what emotions, what trauma you're trying to suppress. And I will leave the link to that webinar, free webinar, below this video. Please watch it. How hard is it to let go of our filters? It depends on the depth of the childhood trauma. Often we can't let go of our filters because we don't realize that we have them. Uh, in the TV series Sex in the City, uh, the main character, Carrie, was struggling to find true love in her life. Every time she ended up in relationships that did not work out. Carrie was complaining to her therapist how unlucky she was in love. She was complaining that all her relationships are ending up the same way. The therapist mentioned to her that all the men that she was dating were different people uh different love stories different events but the one element was always the same and this element was her the therapist suggested that perhaps there is something in her behavior that causes the same outcome over and over again Carrie rejected that idea completely and never went back to the same therapist. Uh, as you can see from this movie, from this example, uh, it's not easy to recognize our filters. Even when the therapist mentioned them to Carrie in a very polite and very respectful way, Carrie became defensive and did not even want to consider this idea. Uh, and as we can see, it's not easy to let go of our filters. In most cases, a person must hit the bottom really, really hard in order to recognize that something is wrong. Something, there is something that has to be changed. It is extremely difficult to do it on your own. In the show, unfortunately, the therapist was not able to help Carrie to see her filters but this is a tv show in reality working with a therapist can be extremely helpful and extremely effective a therapist can provide emotional support and guide the person through the whole process a therapist can find the, the proper words and the, the proper examples how to help a person to heal his inner child what are the most common filters that people use? 
This is an excellent question. Although all people are unique, I can distinguish three common filters that most people use. One, lack of trust in relationships. Two, desire to control everything. Three, difficulty in decision making or taking responsibility. And let's talk uh, a little bit in detail about each of these filters. Let's talk about lack of trust in relationships. Lots of people are afraid to commit in relationships. I receive many emails where people are asking how they can trust their partner. One of the most popular videos on YouTube, one of my most popular videos on YouTube is called Consequences of Dating a Married Man. Trust is something that people want more than anything but at the same time it's the hardest thing to create because of this filter i cannot trust my partner can be abandonment by one of the parents in childhood it can be early death of one of a parent it can be serious illness of a caregiver uh, it can be a parent's divorce, especially when children are between age 10 and 14. Sometimes there is no actual divorce, but the kids know that one of their parents is cheating on the other one. I talk a lot about how trust issue is developed in my webinar uh, entitled Emotional Eating Oral Type Personality. Although emotional eating and trust issues looks like two different uh, topics, they share the same fundamental base. And you can find this webinar on YouTube or you can just uh, check the description below this video and I will include uh, this free webinar in the description. Let's talk about the second major filter that most people use, which is uh, desire to control everything in life. Uh, for example, a woman can say that she has to do everything for her husband because he might forget or miss or misunderstood something. Another example of this filter is when a boss cannot really delegate the job to another person and he has to manage and control everything himself. And the third example of this common filter is when parents do not allow kids to make their own mistakes. Uh, they might expect a 12-year-old child to act like an adult or they might expect that a six-year-old child uh, will not be messy and will be very clean and organized. The third common filter that I see in my practice is the inability to make decisions or take responsibility. Often this happens with people whose parents were going through a complicated divorce. It is also common with people whose parents always argued and were trying to pull the child on one on one side. One of the hardest thing for any child is to pick one parent's side. If I choose mom, I have to reject my dad. If I choose dad, I have to reject my mom. Mother and father are the, represent the whole world for the child. And as a result, the child is becoming indecisive. The child cannot pick between mom and dad. The child cannot reject one of the parents. And even if the child does it, in reality, it's only a mask. It's only a filter. Inside, the child is struggling and feeling a huge pain and huge um, emotional trauma that he cannot process. He has to suppress those feelings and his pain. So a child is learning that to make a decision can be extremely painful. Uh, and the child is learning not to make any decisions at all. It's better not to make any decisions. It's better not to choose anything. And often I see adults who come to me because they are struggling in understanding themselves. 
they don't even know what they really want. They have extremely hard time of understanding or choosing what they want in life. Uh, example of this filter might be a person who is in a romantic relationship for five, seven, ten years and still not sure if his person if his partner is the one another example is a person is he in his 30s who does not know what career path to choose uh, a person does not really know what makes him happy he is so afraid of making a choice that he cannot even be aware of his own desires it takes time and therapy to rebuild the inner self. Uh, it takes time to find the connection within yourself, to understand and to be aware of your own feelings and your own desires. The deeper the trauma, the longer the therapy. But it's possible. A person can be genuinely happy in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s. And I know a woman who... Uh, remarried the fifth time when she was 70 and she is extremely happy in her new marriage uh, so if a person is willing to discover their own potential then i will be happy to guide them in their journey what other challenges can we expect on the way to healing our inner child once we are aware of our filters or our defense mechanisms, the next step is to find the way to let go of them and live without them. Example, a woman might realize that she has a trust issue because she was abandoned by her father in childhood. She knows that it is extremely hard for her to trust men and other people in general. She knows how to criticize men. She knows how to compete with them. She brings huge expectations into the relationship. And she truly wants to find the partner and create loving, caring uh, relationships. But subconsciously, she sabotages her intention. She might act like she is not interested in men. She might not show her affection during the date. She might question everything that man says or does. She might find thousands of errands and convince herself that she does not have time for dating. Her fear of being hurt and left alone is so big that she might not even realize it. She might not truly see how she sabotages her relationships. Uh, she comes to therapy and says, like, I really want to find a partner. I really want to be happy. I'm tired of being alone. But when a good man comes into her life, she won't believe them. She might simply ignore him or not even notice his attempts to flirt with her. But she will always be on alert and notice players and bad guys. She will always uh, see this negative behavior towards her and ignore the good guys. So this way she will kind of reinforce her filters and stay unhappy. I recommend you to watch uh, my free webinar which is called Obstacles to Love. And um, I talk about this a little bit more in detail in that webinar. So just check the description in this video and uh, I will include this webinar as well. Where should we start our healing journey? Our inner child behaves like real children do. Kids don't want to take responsibility in life. They expect that somebody will always do things for them. Therefore, you can ask yourself, where do I expect a miracle in my life? Perhaps you have a belief that one day you will find your Mr. Right or Mrs. Right, and then you will be truly happy. So you're making your own happiness depend on somebody else. Another example, uh, a woman is looking for a rich husband because she does not want to work. And this is another 
childish desire uh, that my daddy will buy me everything, will make me happy and I don't have to do anything. I just have to smile and be beautiful. Uh, a third example is a parent who is making, let's say, 12-year-old child to take care of a toddler. A parent is making the 12-year-old child to change diapers, feed and play and babysit the child. Or a mother uh, who does not spend time with her kids, does not teach them, does not uh, play with them, uh, has an expectations that her kids will become smart, responsible and successful adults. To answer the question, where should we start our healing journey? I would recommend to notice uh, what words you're using and start noticing words like uh, no one, everyone, everybody, never, always, why me, why in my life, why in my family, this is not a fear, uh, why this time of year, why this happens specifically when I decided to do this, this and this. Our inner child loves using these words. Our inner child loves to complain. And when uh, our inner child complains, it gives him an excuse to avoid responsibility. I recommend uh, to start noticing uh, these words uh, in your family members and friends. And then little by little, you will begin to notice it in yourself. It's not easy to notice it in yourself right away because when we are um, in the specific emotional situation, our emotions are overwhelming us. We are not in control of our emotions, so we cannot notice our thoughts and our words, but we can do it with our family, friends and members. So start with them and then little by little you will begin to notice it in yourself and this will be for you a starting point to heal your inner child. Are there any other signs or red flags that can help us to notice our inner child? Yes, there are. Uh, we just spoke about um, paying attention to words. Uh, it is the easiest way. The hardest way is to notice our inner child actions. Uh, let me give you some examples. Uh, for example, people who are always late. People who need to be reminded several times about completing tasks. People, people who complain a lot about politics, the economy, taxes, or about other people. Here we can add people who have a hard time following, the, following rules and authorities. People who don't take care of their body exercise or eat healthy. One of the biggest signs of a wounded inner child is the inability to manage your own emotions. I talk about emotions a lot in my videos. Uh, I have uh, another free webinar that I would recommend you uh, to watch uh, the webinar called Tell Me What You Eat and I Tell You What Problems You Have. In this webinar, I talk about how to identify what emotions you're trying to suppress with food. For example, when a person is angry and trying to suppress his anger, he is drawn to hard food like uh, nuts, uh, chips, uh, crackers, meat, of the f meat uh, with the bone, uh, chicken wings. So when you're angry, you want to crush something, you want to break something. That's why you can be drawn to hard food. Uh, or another example, when a person is trying to suppress feeling of, uh, uh, of loneliness, often we, uh, we are drawn to specific type of food, to specific type of ice cream or to specific um, <laughs> cuisine. We want to eat maybe some specific sausages so we feel lonely we have this loneliness uh, or longiness for a specific person that's why we're drawn for a specific food and the food and the person might not be related to each other but this is the 
algorithm, psychological algorithm, how we suppress our feelings. And of course, when people don't take care of their body, don't exercise, it's also uh, a signal, a red flag about the wounded inner child. Because kids, they don't want to count calories, they don't want to exercise, they don't uh, consider food if it's healthy or not, they just want to have fun, they want to have their pizza, hot dog, cake, uh, mac and cheese, drink, soda, and have fun. If you tell a child, you know, this is the third piece of pizza and uh, you already ate a lot of calories, a child will look at you strange. He won't uh, um, understand your words and for a child it does not really matter if he ate 1000 calories, 2000 calories or 3000 calories. Again, you can find all webinars that I mentioned in this video in the description uh, of this video or you can just go to YouTube channel and type Psychology of Happiness. Uh, Elena Semenek and you know you will see my channel and all the webinars will be there. What steps would you recommend taking to heal the inner child? Today I would like to share with you seven great techniques that will help you to heal your inner child. Number one is guided meditations and specifically guided meditations lots of people don't know how to meditate and if i tell you you have to close your eyes relax you know and think about uh the healing energy that comes to you uh in 99 percent most people will get tired of this after first two three or five minutes so I recommend guided meditation when a person is guiding you through the process, when you are not just meditating, but when you're following a person's voice who is uh, guiding you and helping you to work on one problem or another. And on my YouTube channel, I have uh, several free guided meditation that you can listen for 21 consecutive days. And uh, it should be consecutive days. 21 is the minimum amount of days that we need to develop a new habit, to develop a new belief, system, belief or to develop a new behavior pattern. And th those guided meditations will help you to connect with your inner child and to give uh, your inner child the love, support and protection that he needs. The second technique that I would uh, like to share with you is to pay attention to your thoughts. Uh, your thoughts are your beliefs. That's why I was talking about noticing words that you are using, such as nobody ever always, of course, this is a common sense. So when we generalize the situation, when we generalize uh, people, then it might be a signal um, or that your inner child is wounded and this might be a signal of the situation that you need to uh, explore uh, deep in details, right? So think, uh, pay attention to your thoughts and ask yourself, what do I really feel right now? Do I really want to do this? Self-awareness is the greatest tool to connect to your inner child. It's not the easiest, but it's one of the greatest technique. If you can master it, you will be able to notice your inner child and to connect and to heal your inner child. So tool number two is pay attention to your thoughts and ask yourself a question. What do I really feel right now? What do I really want right now? Technique number three is to take care of your body. As simple as this, exercise two, three times a week. Start eating healthier food. Uh, start um, maybe walking, running, uh, doing stretching. In Russia, I'm Russian, and in Russia we have a saying, a healthy soul lives in a healthy body. Uh, all our limiting beliefs, all our mental blocks create stress and tension inside in our body. By stretching, by working out, you can start releasing those physical blocks from your body. And you will actually feel more free and happier 
once you will do this as a daily routine once you're gonna take care of your body you will notice that you will your posture will change your uh, the way you walk will be different the way you present yourself to the world will be different so your self-esteem will go up and you will be able to heal and to connect to your inner child you will give him this confidence this feelings of i am good i'm worthy uh my life is protective i can achieve anything number four is to have a hobby in life think about what did you like to do in your childhood maybe you have some uh, unrealized dreams that you can easily achieve right now uh, think about what do you like to do right now? What makes you happy? What do you really enjoy? Perhaps you like hiking. Maybe you like fishing. Maybe you like reading a book, bicycling. Maybe you like um, making art. Anything is good. Just allow yourself to have things that you really, really enjoy in life. Allow yourself to have a hobby. Uh, this way you will experience more positive emotions like happiness, uh, joy, you will laugh uh, uh, more often, you will, um, you will have these feelings of excitement and all those feelings will help to heal your inner child. Even without going through like deep pain inside, you can help your inner child just by having a hobby in your life. Number five, technique number five, how to heal your inner child is to learn new things. When we learn new things, we're gaining new experiences in life. And those experiences make it easier for us to move forward from the past. With new experiences, we meet new people, uh, we expand our knowledge. It can be anything from uh, a desire to learn a new language or maybe a desire to learn about nature, about um, new cuisine, maybe about new culture. Perhaps you like to read and you have not been reading a book uh, for a while. Or maybe you always wanted to learn how to play tennis or a musical instrument. Or maybe you always wanted to try scuba diving. New things bring new skills, new experiences, new people, new situations, new opportunities in your life. Number six, how to heal your inner child is to check my free webinars on YouTube and learn more about this topic. Being aware, uh, by gaining information, by learning about the inner child, about our emotions, self-esteem, money, relationships, you will better understand yourself. You will uh, understand uh, other people better and you will uh, be able to understand yourself. Why you did this? Why did you make uh, this decision in your life? Why did you choose this partner? And uh, again, you will develop your self-awareness and self-awareness is one of the greatest tools uh, in your journey of healing the inner child. And number seven is to work with a therapist, is to find the professional person, a mentor, a therapist, a online psychologist, life coach, a person who can guide you through this process of healing your inner child. There are lots of different exercises and methods for doing this. A good therapist, a person who knows uh, about the inner child can choose a method that will be the best for you. That A method that will be the best for you to heal your inner child. And of course, a therapist can provide the emotional support, the love, the protection, the knowledge that your inner child really, really needs. Again, if you have any questions, please write them in the comment section below. If you don't ask your questions, I will not be able to help you. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. 
uh, and uh, subscribe to this channel. Uh, please help me to spread out the word about Psychology of Happiness, about my channel, and share this video with your friends and family on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, via email. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing your questions, to seeing your likes, to seeing your shares. Uh, again, my name is Elena Semenek. I'm an online psychologist and a life coach. And this is my YouTube channel, Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. I release uh, two, three videos every week. So subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.